Hey man, good morning. It's good to see you all. Um, just in case you're wondering, uh, Angeline and Justin and Tim are, uh, we had to call an audible this morning because uh, after 8 o'clock, Casey called uh, deathly ill. And uh, so uh, we, we scrambled and I called Angeline. She said, yeah, well, I called Matt and yeah, she can be there. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the thing about today's worship is that because uh, we've got a stripped down team, that means it's a congregational Sunday. So that means that you are a major part in the band this morning. There you go. So that means that you have to sing loud. That means that you have to clap. That means you have to dance around. No, you don't have to dance around. But uh, today is the day where you get to be the worship leader, right? Uh, along with Angeline. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys to do that. Um, my name is Randy Whittemore. Those of you who are visiting, uh, I'm the pastor here. This is my wife, Ashley. And uh, we are so glad that you joined us this morning. Uh, we have a saying here, and it goes like this. It's a quote from Bre Brennan Manning. It's that God loves you just as you are and not as you should be because none of us are as we should be. But God loves you way too much to leave you as you are. We believe that here, and we want to say you are welcome here no matter what your uh, background is, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. We're only concerned with where you're going. Amen. Well, let's pray and invite the Spirit of God into this place. Holy Spirit, we welcome you here this morning. God, we just ask that you would come and that you would touch our minds and our hearts. Lord, come and meet with us. Fill this place with your spirit, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would do the things this morning that you want to do, that you would say the things this morning that you want to say. Lord, we say have your way in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So anyway, I'm excited this morning. Um, we have a special uh, a special speaker, a presenter. Um, I just wanted to introduce him before he comes and talks. Um, many of you know him um, as uh, Matt McKinney. Uh, he is our associate pastor. Uh, he and his wife, Angeline, here. Um, I, I'm going to have to the Vineyard Church, soon to be completely Oasis Church. Um, we're going to make it all those changes, but um, they came to us a couple years ago and just has been a tremendous blessing to our church family, and um, I'm just uh, always, um, if, you, if those of you who are real close to Matt, you know him as Matt uh, Lowkey uh, McKinney, um, <laughs> because he plays the bass a lot, but he's... <laughs> But he's a, he's a great presenter, and um, uh, I just want to say about him, you have to be careful this morning to listen closely to what Matt is, is saying, because um, Matt has been put on the same pedestal um, yeah. with, with the likes of uh, Billy Graham. <laughs> um, and, and really, um, Matt's following is probably a little higher than, than Billy Graham's um, following. So he no is pressure. anointed. Um, he uh, has a great passion for people and for God's kingdom. And um, I'm just excited uh, to hear him this morning. So would you uh, give a big welcome this morning to uh, Matt McKinney? <laughs> okay, I will say I appreciate you all. I do. I appreciate that that we have freedom here. And that we are encouragers to each other no matter what happens. And I appreciate each one of you. And I appreciate the love that you have for myself and my family. You are a blessing for us. And I appreciate that we can make mistakes together. 
and that it's okay. This is the um, eighth, close to the eighth anniversary of an earthquake in Haiti. Okay, January 10th, 2010, there was a massive earthquake that just devastated the nation of Haiti. Okay. Two years before, I had an opportunity to go um, to Haiti on a mission trip with my brother-in-law, who feels called, but that's his purpose. He goes to Haiti two, three times a year. There's a group of pastors there that he ministers to and works with. And he's, and he's he loves them. He's bound to them. So I had an opportunity to go. There was a pastor's conference, and I went. Okay, at that point, I wasn't really heavily involved in ministry, but I really wanted to go. One, I love missions. I love going to new places. I love people. I love people groups. And this was a place I'd never been. And quite honestly, for me, it was an opportunity to see poverty like I've never, never seen. So I go, and I meet some amazing people and forge some amazing relationships. Okay. Two years later, a little less than two years later, the earthquake hits. There's a part of me that's torn because I have friends there. I'm not sure if they're alive or if they're dead. And that's really hard. So my brother-in-law is very... He um, has a place of standing in the community where we came from in Pennsylvania. He's the borough manager. Um, He kind of runs the community. He was also on the board. He had political aspirations. He knows a lot of people in the Pennsylvania Senate and representatives. So a couple days after the earthquake, he hops on a plane. I so wanted to go with him. I was trying so hard to be able to do it, but I just, I couldn't. But he goes and he coordinates food drops with Pennsylvania legislators. Just some amazing things. I'm feeling like, oh, God, I really want to go. I want to go. But what do I have to offer? I'm not a builder. I'm not somebody high up in, po- in politics to where I can turn, you know, like talk to some people and make things happen. I'm me. The guy who loves people. I'm concerned for people. But I felt like, but I really want to go. So in March of 2010, God opens a door. So I get to go to Haiti with my brother-in-law. We fly down. And so I thought it was bad before I went. It was like a hundred times worse. Rubble is everywhere still on the streets. You know, something happens here. We have a hurricane, right? And there's complete devastation in neighborhoods. But a few months after the hurricane, three months after the hurricane, you know, people have come together. They're helping get stuff out of houses. They're gutting houses. All the stuff's in the yards. And by then, a couple months later, the trucks come in. They take all the stuff and they leave. There, nothing was really changed. It was horrible, right? And again, I'm there. I'm... I'm with, an, it's my brother-in-law and I, and there's another couple there. Now, this couple basically met in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And their parents were both missionaries there. The husband, his parents were actually buried at an orphanage in Haiti. One of the things I felt like God put upon me or allowed for me to be able to do, it was just to love them. We went to the orphanage. And I had it, again, thinking third world country, one of the poorest nations in the world, an orphanage, it's basically just a block building. And it was devastated. I remember walking up and the rubble is just piled up on the street. There was a shoe in the rubble that was still on somebody who was buried. 
two months after the earthquake. It's an image that I won't forget. And again, I'm standing there wondering, God, what am I here for? I, I want to be here. My heart is to be here, but what am I here for? The overwhelming feeling that I had at that point was being anxious because I just didn't know. I'm the type of person that I need to know what's going on. I'm a planner. That's who I am. Now, am I one of those A-type personalities that has my whole life planned out? No. But I need to know what's going on. I mean, ask Angeline. There are those moments where She'll be saying, okay, we're going to do this. And, you know, it's about a month or two away. And I'm like, okay, so when is it? What time is it? How are you going to get there? What's going to happen? She doesn't know those details. And she doesn't care. I care. It drives me nuts. It drives me a little anxious. Because I need to know. Back to that trip to Haiti. I shared this at our life group a little bit on Wednesday. And here's my shameless plug for life groups. Come. <laughs> it's where real life happens. Honestly. It's where you can come and just be you. It's where you can come and no matter how you're feeling, you can just come and just hang with us for a little while. We've been praying for one of my co-workers who's been out of work since August. And I communicate with her. She's been in a bad place. And you know, she came this past Wednesday. And we were able just to love her. And just say, hey, how you doing? Do you know that we've been praying for you since August when you lost your job? She got a job offer this week. It was awesome. It was Yes, exactly. It was so encouraging. And we were able to have her come in and just be us. Be who we are to her. Be real to her. Okay, this thing keeps popping off. I know I have to turn it to the back, but you know. I'm just like, how about I do this? All right, technical difficulties. I'm an IT guy, we expect them. So that trip to Haiti, for me, changed a lot of my thoughts. One of the unique things that happened was we went up into the mountains. And it's Sunday morning. And we're thinking we're going to go and we're going to like fellowship with fellow believers. Now, obviously, I can't understand a word they're speaking because it's in Creole. But I don't need to understand. Because the message is still the same. and It's, in, it's, it's still as impactful. Whether it's in English, Spanish, Creole, whatever. It doesn't matter. So we get there to this church. And I use the term very loosely. It's basically some concrete walls on the bottom, probably about three feet high. And then I think they just went around and grabbed whatever tin they could find with some wood from a tree or something and built these walls. And then they put a roof on top that's still kind of tin. And I think sometimes you may see like tree branches because there's holes. So if it's raining, water's coming through. So let's put some leaves or something over it to help, right? I never went to the bathroom, so I can't tell you what that was like. But I can only imagine. <laughs> We're in worship. Again, it's in another language. I have no idea. But they're singing praise songs, and I know what the tune is. So I can kind of think, oh, I know what that song is. For example, maybe it's, you know... I don't think it was, but Amazing Grace. You hear the sound for Amazing Grace, you know what it is. Right? You know, and so you can follow along. And so I'm singing songs that I think they are in English, and everyone else is, is singing in Creole. It was amazing. It was amazing what God did. And so after worship is over, they're taking up the offering. Whew! That was a surprise. Um... They're taking up the offering, and it's a special offering that Sunday. And I saw something that I have never seen in the American church, and I don't think I ever will. All right? 
So, again, thinking back to the church, it's dirt floor. There's no concrete, there's no carpet, it's dirt. And if it's raining, I'm sure it's muddy. Okay? And the chairs are, again, whatever they could find. So you have some pews that look like they came out of, like, the 1700s because they're so old and decrepit looking. And the chairs, some are metal, paint peeling. I mean, it's just, it's poverty, but they're using what they have, and it doesn't matter. Today's a special offering where they were going to just give toward their building. And I and they have everybody come up the aisle. People are dropping their money in the offering plate up front. They have a, a, a table up there with the offering plate on it, and they're just putting money in. And at the very end, I see somebody walk up with a pig. And they took the pig, and they tied it to the, uh, the leg of the table, and they left it there. And as I'm watching this, my interpreter, he leans over to me and he says, by the way, you're preaching this morning. (laughs) Okay, talk about anxiety. Talk about being nervous. I had no idea. So it's not like here where, okay, I can just... I used to pride myself on being able just to come up front and wing in it. As Randy had told me earlier, it's kind of the old Pentecostal method, right? You just take something and you just go with it and let the Spirit lead. There's a time and a place for that, and I totally get that, and I'm all for it. But God's taken me to a place where, man, I want you to prepare. I want you to really put your heart into this, right? That's what I want for you. And so that morning, I wasn't there yet, but I thought, God, what am I going to do? Because it's not like I can come into the American church, to the Western church, which I'm used to, and give this three-point sermon or whatever. I'm in a third world country where they have nothing. How am I going to relate with people? And right then, at that moment, God put on my heart, John 3.16. As a Christian, you know what that verse is. If you watch football, you see it usually, you know, somebody's holding the, the sign out in the stands. But I thought, that's how I can relate to people. Love. That's how I can do it. And so I started speaking. Now in Haiti... You have to get a little excited. I'm not that excitable. I'm (laughs) low-key. But I did. I kind of made it work. I made it my own. And when I was finished, the um, head of the the, the movement of churches there comes up to me in his broken English and he says, that's my favorite verse. He goes, we love to speak about this verse. And I just thought, okay, God, thank you. But it blew me away, right? So this week, I am struggling and struggling. I'm like, God, what am I supposed to speak on today? I have no idea. Um, Again, I like to know, just give me like a one word, two word kind of thing that I'm going to talk on this morning. And then I can kind of think about it and mold it. And Wednesday night, I shared that story, and I said, I don't have anything. And then God started moving on my heart. And I was able to put some thoughts to it, and He started showing me some stuff, and it was amazing. There's something about the bareness of worship when it's just a few people that it just penetrates deep within Matt Redman used to have this amazing worship band. And at one point, God said, I want to strip all that away. I want you to get back to the basics and just focus on me. And that's kind of how I felt we were this morning. Randy said, it's about all of us. We are the instrument this morning. And honestly, that's what I felt. I was moved to tears this morning because of God's presence. 
And as I'm in that moment, God says, you're going in a different direction this morning. Everything that you have, that's not for today. I've got something else. And it's very appropriate because it scares the snot out of me. But it's okay. Philippians 4 6 tells us, and I'm going to use the New Living Translation don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. So I'm sitting there this morning and that verse kind of hits me. Now again, that's the New Living Translation. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is what I'm going to, you know, maybe I need to stand up and just share that after worship. But instead, God's like, no. I want that as your message this morning. In our house, we've been dealing with anxiety. We've been dealing with fear. We're talking through these things, right? And I'm praying with my kids about anxiety and just, hey, it's okay. And sometimes I get a little harsh because I get so angry and it's not at my kids. It's at the enemy who comes in and tries to flood them with fear and anxiety. Because me, that's something that I have struggled with for a long time in my life. I was a scared little boy. I slept with the covers over my head because I was protected by my covers so monsters wouldn't get me. That's who I was. I still sleep with them kind of high, but it has nothing to do with monsters today. It's just a habit. But I was fearful. If I was asked to stand up in front of the classroom, I couldn't do it. I was so afraid. I was afraid that people would look at me and judge me for what I looked like. I went out, and this is the 80s, and I asked my parents for Christmas for parachute pants. Now, some of you may not know what parachute pants are, but some of you do. Parachute pants because it was the 80s, and I wanted to be a break dancer, right? Okay, <laughs> look at me. I am not a break dancer. I am not. But boy, I proudly wore those parachute pants to school. I got my bandanas and I wrapped them around different areas, right? And you know what happened? Someone made fun of me and I never wore them again. Because I was fearful and I had anxiety in my life. And if someone came against me, instead of fighting, I backed down. I'm not proud of that. But it's who I was. But you know it's not who I am today. Who I am is a child of the Most High. And with my Father's help, I'm an overcomer. And I can overcome anything through Christ. He gives me everything I need. Everything I need, He gives it to me. And it's available for me. So in a moment where I'm unsure, or I have no idea what's going to happen, He does. And He is going to walk at me through it. And the Holy Spirit is going to be right next to me saying, this is what I want you to say. This is how I want you to go about this. He's going to give me everything I need. And so in a moment where I'm unsure, or I'm anxious, He says, don't be anxious for anything. Don't worry. I've got you. I'm not going to put you up there and make you look like a fool unless it's what I want. But I'm not going to let you do it. Because I've got your back. And I'm with you. I love my Lord. And I'm excited that He walks with me. And that He gives me strength every day to not be anxious, to not be worried, and to not be fearful. And that's no longer my name. That was my name a long time ago. But fearful is not my name anymore. And I thank God that it's not. So, interaction time. 
We're going to do something a little different this morning. What I would like is for everyone to stand and just come right up. We are a family together. Okay, we're a family. Everybody, come up front. We're going to worship together. For those who are feeling anxious, feeling worried, we have our family around us that can just join arms with us and just start praying for us. It doesn't have to be anybody special. Anybody, if you feel like, hey, God, God's putting on your heart to pray for somebody, I want you to pray for them. Right? We are a family. There's nothing, there's no shame here. There's nothing bad here. This is a chance for us just to love on each other and to say, God, these are the things that I'm feeling today. Why don't you come to inhabit your people? Okay? Reach out to people. Love each other. Okay? That's who we are. We're a family. I can't stress that enough. I am excited for the direction that God is taking our church. It is an amazing journey that we're going to be on. And I am excited that I get to be on it with all of you. All of you. And God is going to change our lives. So if you're feeling afraid like I was as a child, that's no longer going to be your name. Because God's going to renew you. He's going to give you strength. He's going to change you. And that change is going to begin here because we're going to link arms and we together. Because God's using us. We're going to help each other change. Right now, we're small and mighty, but we're going to continue to grow. We need a foundation, that family foundation. That's what we have. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us special. It is. So I want to encourage you, as we're singing these songs, just to close your eyes and just sing. I don't care if you have a lousy voice. I don't care if you feel like, oh my gosh, no one wants to hear this. I don't care. Sing. It comes from your heart. If you're, I don't care if you're low key. That's right. I don't care. Just sing. Open your heart to what God wants to do. And I, I will tell you that in that moment, if there's something God wants, if there's somebody God wants you to pray for, that's when He's going to start to open it up. And maybe somebody you don't know, or somebody that you're not familiar with. Doesn't matter. Be anxious for nothing. Don't let anxiety rob this moment. Okay? Don't let it rob us. I just want to encourage as well. If your name isn't fearful, maybe your name is angry that you identify as. Or maybe you identify as knowledgeable, or maybe you identify as tiny, maybe you identify as worthless, maybe you identify as powerful. The names that you have for yourself, let's let that be. This is my day. 